Um, okay, so Venom number one. Venom number one by Donnie Cates and Ryan Segman, J.P. Mayer, and Frank Martin, a, a stellar creative team. You guys are going to you know, bring us through this. You guys move through it uh, as you please at your own pace. And I will. I got a whole bunch of questions here from Twitter. Some of them I'm okay. going to interject uh, throughout the book, and the rest we'll get to at the end. How's that sound? Sounds good. Okay. All right. Then um, by all means, take it away. Well, I'll, I I can start like this. I mean, how's it, how's this for a good place to start? I, um, when I uh, this is kind of pre Ryan being on the book. Mm-hmm. Um, when I first started on Venom, in fact, the um, the second arc that we did, the Abyss, was going to be the first arc. Mm-hmm. Um, I had it in my head that I wanted to do a very quiet story about Eddie Brock first. Um, and it was actually going to start a little bit different. It was going to start with Eddie kind of having um, just retired completely from the whole Venom thing Mm -hmm. and kind of living out in the woods um, and uh, kind of being out on his own. Um, It's going to open with him, like, chopping wood with with an axe made out of his symbiote um, and, like, killing a bear or some dumb shit. It was real bad. (laughs) Um, And then uh, went from there. And, And very, very correctly... Uh, C.B. Sobolski called me and he was like, this second arc that you have planned, Rex? And I was like, yeah. He's like, it's got a fucking symbiote dragon in it. And I was like, yeah. He's like, do that first, dummy. And I was like, (laughs) yeah, you're right. You're right. Um, And so then kind of working uh, and talking about the the dragon of it all and the null of it all Mm -hmm. and all these things. Um, I I was talking to uh, Jason Aaron, who's a buddy of mine, and an endless source, source an endless <laughs> source of inspiration, um, an endless source of inspiration and help uh, whenever I get stuck on something. And I was kind of walking him through all of it because if I can get like the first three pages of a of an issue, mm-hmm. I can I can uncrack the rest of it. But for the fucking life of me, I could not figure out how to open the first issue of Venom. Mm -hmm. Um, and I was kind of walking, uh, Jason through it. And I said that the name of the, of the dragon was the Grendel. And he was like, wait, but is it the Grendel? Like the real one, like from Beowulf? And I was like, yeah. And in fact, we're going to go back and like tell that story and like show that. And he was like, well, those are your opening pages. Mm -hmm. He was like, if you open a Venom number one on fucking Beowulf, like that's (laughs) going to get people to like pay attention. Yeah. And I was like, that's a good call, dude. It's a good call. So that's a Jason Aaron thing. You'll find that most of the things I do well are because Jason told me to. Um, And so there's um, on this first page, I don't don't know if you want to talk about, oh, I'll say this, translated from ancient Norse, that little like editor's note. Yeah. That was such an enormous point of contention for us um, because that's not the language that they spoke. Um, So like the the uh, it's been now people are going to correct me on this but it's been a while since i had to, to research this beowulf like where it actually took place was like in ancient scandinavia mm-hmm. and so like i think my original one was like translated from like scandinavian and they wrote back and they were like that's going to confuse people and i was like but it's accurate and they were like just make it norse and i was like i don't know if ancient norse is a language um but Okay, I'm sure someone... I, I never heard anything about it from anybody, so I guess it's fine. Um, um, do you want to talk about maybe the like the art of this page? Yeah, uh, so a- any time that I open a new project, and a lot of times when I open a, an issue, um, I like to do something sort of a little different, like a as though we're doing a cool opening credits scene in a movie. So that's why we have like the, um, the panels overlaid over the... Um, lightning shaped uh symbiote Mm -hmm. here um and that was just like kind of a way of like hey this is something different this is something new you know whatever and then um the i was really uh nervous during these pages right so i drew these pages with like the tiniest tiniest pencil (laughs) because (laughs) It had to be like the tiniest line I could get. And I drew the shit out of these pages to the mm-hmm. point where mm-hmm. like my hand was nearly bleeding. But these are also the uh, the first three pages actually are the pages that J.P. Mayer did to try out for the book. Oh, that's um, right. I wasn't, um, I wasn't familiar with his work, but we were looking for somebody and we kind of run through the guys um, that, that, you know, the, you know, you say Jonathan Glapion and... Um, 
Danny Mickey, and these guys are all DC exclusive. And I was like, I want somebody like that, like that type of style. Mm -hmm. And Ricky Purden, to his credit, was like, um, I got this guy. He doesn't usually ink in this style, but he sent me some samples that were in this style. And I think that's how he wants to ink. He just doesn't get to ink guys that, you know, it works on. And so he sent me these samples, and I was like, you know, I was kind of nervous and i was like all right well we'll have him do a tryout page and he sent us page one and i was just like jesus christ <laughs> yeah <laughs> this guy's phenomenal perfect. from the jump yeah yeah so i was just like yep yep he's hired let's do it and he's been freaking amazing yeah he's been all killing the way ever through. since and um uh, the, i will say one other thing i noticed in panel one this is just like a, a bloopers reel here the <laughs> The things in panel one coming out through the sides of the door, that was supposed to be smoke, but Frank clearly thought that that was a symbiote. And I, <laughs> I think that's a better that. call. I think it should be. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it kind of works, a, you know? Yeah, it kind of way works. Um, there's little, there's little like, um, like foreshadowing things just here on these first pages, um, including, in fact, um, our, our first cover. Um, the lightning that plays out mm -hmm. through this entire thing. Um, if, you, if you notice almost every scene that we... Like we establishing shots all throughout this um, have lightning in them, mm -hmm. um, and that'll that'll play a bigger bigger role as we go on. I don't know if we can tip our hand on on, the, on that yet, right? That that's well. I mean, that's going back to the symbiote's origin with Null. I mean, the mm -hmm. the, the way that the symbiotes kind of lost their bond with Null uh, in the first place and became what we know them as is because of lightning and because of Thor. Right. And, uh, and Thor coming in. So that's all there for a reason. These, um, like, like super, like, uh, you'll see this, uh, something that Frank does in his storytelling is as the book uh, starts to teeter over out of, and this will be in the entire run, uh, as it teeters out of superhero comics and into the realm of horror, mm -hmm. Frank highlights those by just filling red on the background. Mm -hmm. um, so every single time it tips over into horror, he starts to just drench it in red. And that's because those panels are tipping us and edging us ever closer to absolute carnage. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's, uh, which, he's unbelievable. He's... Um, yeah. He he really puts a lot of thought into pages. Yeah. He 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 will message us and be like, "Can I do blah blah blah?" You know, and it's just gotten to the point where like Frank, whatever you do is going to be amazing. Like, yeah, <laughs> he, yeah. he's no, always it, asking it, it, if he can do something, and then we're just like, "Just do whatever you're going to do." We've never said <laughs> no. You know, we've never said no. Like, uh, he's it's always yeah, amazing. He, that's the thing, man. It's our entire crew, like the Venom Gang, which is what I've always called it because it feels like that, mm -hmm. uh, top to bottom. We. Everyone is just so locked in and mm -hmm. knows exactly what we're doing here. And yeah, like there's exactly very little what, what notes. We're... There's no notes on scripts. There's very little notes I can't on art. Remember yeah. the last time we got a note? Yeah. Right. Um, so when we get into the main, uh, when we kind of get out of our uh, our little um, dream sequence, it's not really a dream sequence. He's connected to past like hive mind memories and stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, on page two, we get our first instance of the symbiote ancient language, uh, which is a pretty simple cipher for all those at home. Um, what that says uh, at the bottom there is God is coming. Um, and you can work that language backwards from there. Mm -hmm. um, so we've actually, uh, a number of people wrote in with questions about the language. Um, a okay. couple of them, Nate F. and Morgan says, can we get a rough translation of any of them? And, um, and then Benji asked, um, do you have like an English translation method? Like, is there a direct translation? Do you have a chart with all the, the letters? And yeah, everything? there is. And, and how that worked was in the script, I said, um, I just wrote it in English, and I said, hey, get the Marvel bullpen to make this into a cool-looking language. Nice. And All right. Did. Comics. Uh, but Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> and so, you know, later on in the issue, you'll see God is coming when we see, like, the symbiote in, or the null infected of it. Um, and then you'll say, I think the first instance of the word null is written in that language, mm -hmm. and it's uh, right before Rex blows the, like, detonates um, the explosive on Eddie's uh, face. Uh, there, so I mean, you can you can kind of reverse engineer it from there, but if you I mean, you kind of just squint at it, it it kind of reads in English. Um, mm -hmm. uh, so to, to answer the question, yes. Um, now, one of the things that we did that we constantly do in this book um, is it's always kind of been my contention that like um, you know the you know Venom is the Batman to Spider Man's uh, Superman. 
Sure. Right. And so as a result, uh, you'll notice that almost without fail, it's nighttime and it's raining in mm -hmm. our books mm -hmm. almost all the time. Mm -hmm. And that was a very deliberate thing on our end because we did want it. We didn't. We're it is our our um, it's kind of our goal with this book. Um, and I've and Ryan's heard me on this spiel a, a million times. But, um, you know, the Punisher started out as a Spider-Man bad guy. Mm -hmm. Right. But none of us think of him like that anymore uh, because writers and uh, artists came in and, and they made his world his own and gave him his own bad guys and his own like section of the of the Marvel U to kind of play in. Right. Absolutely. And so that is our, our ultimate goal with our Venom run is we want to separate him from Spider-Man's very long shadow. Mm -hmm. um, and so a part of doing that is we, we wanted Venom's New York to look like Venom's New York. We didn't want... Uh, to see Thor flying by or um, Stark Tower or any of that kind of stuff. We wanted it to feel like a world in which he uh, encapsulates and he is very alone. You'll see in Absolute Carnage, I don't think it's any mystery to anybody that Peter Parker is in Absolute Carnage. I think that's pretty on Front Street, right? I think so. um, when Peter lot. shows up, um, the tone changes and the colors change mm -hmm. because all of a sudden Eddie is now, for the first time in the book, entering into the Marvel U. And so yeah. things start to kind of change around him, and he hates it. Like, he hates having to enter into that world. Um, in fact, I think the door that he knocks on to go and speak to Spider-Man has 616 on it because he's entering in the Marvel U. Mm -hmm. um, and so you'll see that here. We established this. Thank that, you. Yes, that was a whole Ryan <laughs> thing. It's not me. Um, and so this is this is that. You can see here that, like, is a very, in, very stark contrast to um, a lot of the other books that you see at Marvel, um, we wanted to give him his own feel. So it's dark and it's dirty um, and it's quite uh, horrible and alone. Um, uh, the page after that, unless you want, did you have anything to say about that page? Um, I, was, I mean, the page after that, it's just, uh, you know, try to make it claustrophobic and small and right. show Eddie at his very worst and, you know, kind of play off of what I remember from Daredevil Born Again when Matt Mur Murdock was all fucked up. So. Yeah. That's pretty much it. Well, this is the shot that the Venom movie stole from us. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> the next with page. him taking these pills and looking in the mirror. Which yeah, I was they totally stole about. it from us. We, totally, we invented that shot of a man looking seriously into the mirror. Yeah. Um, oh, the long hair thing. Uh, I, I, this, is, this is so much uh, Ryan and I being 90s kids. Mm. Uh, mm -hmm. Because some of the best slashed worst Venom books of all time... He has this long, gorgeous Thor hair, mm -hmm. and I always loved it. And I was, I was pushing Ryan the entire arc of this to get him in the rain and have him push his hair back and give us a, a like that sweet uh, business up top party in the back mm -hmm. look that he was known for in mm -hmm. like Lethal Protector. Um, but I don't think Ryan ever did it, which is pretty irritating. Well, I will say also uh, <laughs> something on these pages is. Um, I remember we had a conversation and my instinct um, was to make Eddie, uh, you know, the ugly sort of McFarlane sort of right. bulky, you know, meathead. Meat Very yeah. round. And uh, Donnie said, no, no, more handsome. And I was like, I, I don't see that. You know, I, I, don't, I don't know about that. So I was giving him some pushback. And I think that you'll notice as I go through – and I kind of grasp things more. This is one of the things I also love about comics is how we can, you know, Jack Kirby, the thing when he first came out, looked like literal poop. And then he became this Rocky monster. Or Iceman was a fluffy without... snow cone. What's that? Well, Iceman was like a fluffy snow cone. Yeah. Before they figured out how to draw ice. But I just changed, you know, slowly over time I started changing it. And we, we end up with a, a handsomer, you know, and he's still not like the best looking guy in the world. But now... The way I draw him is He's much a leading more. man. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And, mm -hmm. and 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 once I, you know, you get the grasp, like, no, we we this guy's a hero, you know. So, yeah. I mean, I still drew him handsome, handsomer than I did in Venom Inc., where uh, I drew him both monstrous and just totally disgusting looking. So. Well, and these were conversations that we had just like over and over and over again, developing the look of our Venom. Our right. Venom might not seem that dissimilar than like what you're used to, but it really, really is. It's um, I, I kept on, I kept on pushing Ryan towards, um, make him look like a guy in a suit. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Like make him look like there's a man under there. Because I just, right. I just thought, uh, you know, you you lose some of his humanity when he starts to look like the Hulk when he's Venom, right? And at the end of the day, people love Spider Man because of Peter Parker, not right. because of Spider Man or because of Miles, right? Because mm-hmm. the character underneath the mask. And I thought that was something that had been kind of absent from Venom comics for so long. Is we right. we we love the way that Venom looks and we love this style, but. I love Eddie Brock, and he's such a a, a, a character uh, uh, with such a fertile ground to kind of grow him into a, uh, a a little bit deeper of a of a person of a leading uh, hero. And so, as a result, we we push towards having him uh, look a little bit more leading man, a little bit more sympathetic, mm-hmm. um, and also looking like a man. Um, a recognizable human and so this demon a hero. under there yeah a yeah. hero no, yeah no nobody loves like the big bulky like like the joe mad ultimates venom is so freaking cool but if we would have oh, done awesome. that, it, it would have cheapened what we were doing because yeah. he would have been you know he he would have just been a monster and right to us it's it's eddie brock wearing a costume not you know yeah a monster you know he's not a total mon. he's still in there when he becomes venom yeah well, absolutely. Yeah, and it and also it, it it also, for lack of a better term, humanizes the other half of him, the symbiote, as well, mm-hmm. because it's it's easy to get lost in the and we keep on saying the monster of it because that's how I, I, I'm I'm only saying that because that's how other other people perceive him, right? But like it is the other half of him, and so you don't want to demonize it too much one mm-hmm. way or the other. I know that's that's ironic coming from me and the shit that I've done in this book, but um, you want to you want to keep. Uh, it's a hard character to write because it's two characters. You're writing a team up book uh, for the majority of it, you know, and so you want to keep those um, kind of straddled in as much of a, you know, a reality, uh, for lack of a better term, as possible. Um, the book, to me, like the concept behind Venom, the central uh, premise of Venom, has always been a sci-fi horror premise, mm-hmm. and it, it never got treated like that. It got treated like a just a, a bad guy or a, a superhero book, and so we're really trying to do that and i personally think it's fucking creepier if it looks like a dude with an alien on them rather right. than uh, the hulk with sharp teeth that's absolutely you know. yeah and i feel like so many times over the years that we've seen venom like when you see uh, venom proper it's you know it's the big angry face like you were just saying kate's the teeth the eyes the tongue it's all there um, but what you guys are doing here and, you know, Ryan, you draw these, these faces that are so expressive and you're putting them on Eddie, you're putting them on the symbiote. And it's those things I think that you guys are, are, are doing that humanize Eddie. That's what you, you guys are talking about here. And I feel like there's just so many different times that we're seeing, um, all these expressions on both Eddie and the symbiote's face. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And uh, I, I think, you know, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's ripping Spider-Man's mask off in, in, in a fight. So we can get a little bit more with Peter or making the eyes emote and everything. Um, right. And we and do that all the time in this book. I don't know. Mm-hmm. I, I do it all the time when, when Eddie lands or he's having a conversation with somebody, we always peel it back. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Always mm-hmm. peel it back so we can see Eddie. I think I, I, my favorite time that it happens in the book and it's later on in the run is when Miles sees him and Miles is so scared. And Miles mm-hmm. is having this like horrible reaction and Eddie just instantly pulls it back and shows him his face. And is like, hey man, hey, 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 I don't know you, but I'm like, I'm not a bad guy. And I think it's, uh, to me, an instinctual thing that I do in the book that I think it's just a thing that I, I think that Eddie would do a lot so that because he doesn't, I don't think he wants people to be afraid of him. Mm-hmm. Uh, unless he does, unless you're a bad guy and he needs you to be terrified of him. I think when he's talking to Peter, he's talking to um, his son, for God's sakes, or anybody like like that, I almost always have him peel it back because those teeth and that, and that tongue and those eyes, that's the war face. That's the claws come, coming out, mm-hmm. you know? And that's a thing that Ryan and I talked about is that, like, when when the teeth come out, we always want that to feel like that's Wolverine's claws coming yeah, out. absolutely. Mm-hmm. Right? Because um, that's that's the war face. Yeah, that'll right. take us over to the splash page, actually, where initially... Yeah. Uh, so we got the splash page here of Venom swinging through um, after the uh, credits page, um, which was, you know, a big moment for me. But initially, we were going to... We, we had him with no uh, mouth. Yeah, yeah. Um, he was going to be uh, completely, you know... 
have no teeth there. And then we were going to bring We were actually, later. the plan was, yeah, we were, the plan was to show no teeth in this entire thing until he turns around and is like null infected. Um, right. But it just read, it didn't read the way that we wanted it to. It read like a big beefy Spider-Man in the black costume. Right. Um, and especially with this being our big splash page of like, this page very much is me, you know, and and Ryan's like a, a statement piece. It's this yeah. is what our venom is. This is, you know, in the rain with a bag and like with those with those webs, which, which we haven't seen those webs with him in a long time. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, you know, editorial kind of walked us back from the uh, from the mouth, the no mouth thing, because they were like, if you're going to do this, then do it. You know? Yeah, we kind of. Yeah, I, I remember our reaction was more just like, eh. Yeah, fine. We won't fight him. Yeah, all right. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Um, and so after that, of course, we get this, um, which for some people were quick uh, on Twitter to point out, um, some classic spaghetti webbing over here on the splash page. Yeah. Um, yeah. Some uh, some classic touches there. Um, the next page over, we uh, we get a little visit from a brand new jack-o'-lantern and grizzly. And um, let me find it here. Um Venomaniac brother HH, he has a couple of questions for you guys. One of which okay. is, um, is that he loves Jack Lantern and into Grizzly, and uh, wonders why are we using Jack Lantern? Why is he showing up here? Um, you want to know the real answer? Absolutely. Jack was the kind of the big bad of Rick's uh, Venom run, mm-hmm. and I kind of wanted to fuck him up in the first issue to show Rick. <laughs> 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 um, I didn't know. I'm learning something right now. Did you too. not know that? <laughs> like, I and don't get me wrong. Like I, I need people to understand that I love and adore Rick. I, 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 since I think he's a brilliant writer and he's been a great friend to me. And I, a gun to my head, couldn't say a bad thing about Rick. But I am a competitive prick sometimes. <laughs> and if I was going to take over this book. All I heard when I, like, every, every fucking tweet that I got when I was announced on this book was bring flashback, bring flashback, bring flashback. Where's Flash? All this stuff, right? <laughs> and I'm such, I'm such a fucking 90s kid that I was like, yo, Agent Venom stuff was dope. Like, don't get me wrong. Like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. those books were fucking dope. But <laughs> Eddie Brock is Venom. Like, let's right. all relax. Oh, right absolutely. Quick. And you've got right. that uh, that scene a uh, couple issues down the line where, um, spoiler alert for, for some readers, where mm-hmm. Flash's uh, essence gets to be reunited yeah. with the symbiote, and we get that yeah. really, really awesome Agent Venom scene. And, of and that was my, got my I love you to Rick. That absolutely. was my... Because, mm-hmm. like, also, we want to touch every inch of Venom's history. We, mm-hmm. we, we want to touch upon everything that has gone into making this iconic character that we are so fortunate to inherit, right? Mm -hmm. Because without Rick, without uh, everyone, without uh, Cullen and and Mike and everybody who has done this book, we don't get to do this book. So it is, sometimes it's a little poking fun, sometimes it's a little bit um, paying homage. In this instance, I wanted to show that yes, Flash Thompson is dope and was a really great character. Uh, but it did take him about 38 issues to beat this guy, and Venom gouges his fucking eyes out in an alleyway in about six <laughs> seconds. Um, so that's pretty but it's not, fucking. But dope. I also went out of my way to make sure that I'm stating that this is not the same dude. <laughs> this is a different yeah. dude from that dude. It's just yeah. visually it looks cool. And actually, what's awesome is that this guy, whoever the hell this guy is, um, is now the bad guy in Cullen's War of the Realms issues. And if you look closely at, at, at Jack in the War of the Realm issues, one only one of his eyes is on fire. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> because fucking Venom. And I, I have a fun story about the, uh, uh, the, the eye gouging thing, which is pretty funny. Um, why are we using eye gouging Grizzly is always funny. in these other characters? The God's Honest Truth is I told Marvel Editorial in the script, I said, hey, I need a collection of bad guys. Who's available? Mm-hmm. Uh, and these were the characters that were available, <laughs> <laughs> and, and that's the long and short of that. All right. You know what's funny? I the the kangaroo. He's on here, right? That's him. Mm-hmm. Is that? Yeah, I think so. Mm-hmm. And uh, I went back and had to read some stuff with him just because I saw it. Like I was looking up reference, and then I was like, I want to read that book. <laughs> so stupid. <laughs> Such a did, dumb character. Did you read any badass kangaroo stories, Ryan? Uh, no, there were there. I don't think there is such a thing. Hey, you don't. Hey, you say that, and then Donny Cates writes a goddamn 
fucking kangaroo Yeah, he'll bring book. the kangaroo and he'll be <laughs> yeah, huge. Yeah, it'll be yeah. pretty sweet. Kangaroo number one. Yeah. <laughs> go get it, wins. folks. Speculators, go get it. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, you uh, you got this scene with them. Do you have any more to say about that, or do you want to move on to uh, to Yeah, any snaps yeah let's go shots? ahead. I'll just say this um, real quick. This page sure. was really fucking hard uh, to draw. Which one? For some, the, the page with them in the warehouse. Look okay. at all that stuff I drew in there for something where we were just going to get rid of these guys. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, that's the gag, though, right? Is you think, uh, yeah. I wanted to walk readers down a, a path of in these first few issues that, like, oh, they were reading a Marvel comic book, and here come the weirdo bad guys and all this stuff, and, like, this is what this whole book's going to be about, you know? Is very much a bait and switch, and you and you sold it as if this was gonna about to be our actual plot. Yeah, you know? I mean, it doesn't work unless I put all the work into it. It's just right. uh, I remember at the time being like, "God damn it!" <laughs> 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 Gotta draw all these boxes and shit. Who cares? It is the most boring part of this issue, um, not because of your art, but just plot wise. I can see if I was a Venom reader and I got to this point, and I was just like, "Motherfucking the kangaroo and grizzly? Is that what we're doing? <laughs> mm-hmm. Is that what this book's gonna be about? You know?" Um, but we needed to get to a, I needed to, you know, we needed to scare people, you know? Um, and this is the first and last time that we've ever acknowledged that Eddie Brock used to be a reporter. Mm-hmm. <laughs> He's taking pictures, which is not his job. He's not a photographer. Um, that's what Peter did. I always say that, um, Peter's, Peter's an, um, uh, Peter's an artist and Eddie's a writer. Right, so like if they made a comic book, Eddie would be the writer, mm-hmm. which is weird to think about. Anyway, um, yeah, I don't really have a whole lot on this. Um, I'm trying to. I, I haven't read this since it came out, so I don't know what this is even even about. Uh, we can oh skip yeah, that I got a little bit of pushback from editorial on this scene. There was a note that came very early on that said that he should jump, like that Eddie should jump down there and start like breaking it up and that's absolutely like the faint of all this is mm-hmm. that like the lights go out and like you know like oh shit venom's about to jump on the scene and like do some shit mm-hmm. and the gag is like again this kind of goes back to that thing that i was trying to do when i uh did my pitch at the beginning was that he's kind of retired like he doesn't want to do it anymore he has no interest in in being venom because he can't control venom anymore and so he's mm-hmm. scared you guys hear my fucking cat? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> you hear that? God damn it. Hold on. Find him a mate for her. <laughs> Dude, it, no, she just wants to go outside. That's a whole fucking thing. All right, go outside and never come back. Never We're come back. in the wind now. Okay. Um, so, um, yeah, Ryan, you want to talk about I, I Can I just say I love – this is one of my favorite panels that you've ever done is this – when fucking Venom straight paralyzes <laughs> this fool in the street. The panel two on this next mm-hmm. page where he, he <laughs> kicks him in the back. It's great. It's brutal. Yeah, I, I really... I was super excited about this page just to get to do that all black um, lightning from behind. Uh, I don't know. That that was just like... That's another one of those ones where it's just like, yeah, I know I know exactly how that's going to look mm-hmm. before I even mm-hmm. draw it. It just it just had to be drawn then rather than like thought about. I mean, about. That, that sound effect, like literally what else could that mean? He just straight paralyzed this fool in the, in the street. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I have a, a tendency of, to be a little brutal in the fighting and people will love. say like, oh, they would, he would never hurt somebody like that, you know? Yeah. Well, no, Spider-Man wouldn't. <laughs> well, I, 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 that's what I mean. I go overboard even when Spider-Man does. But I'm like, no, oh, there's well, a you scene, don't know if they're actually hurt. No, <laughs> yeah, no Ryan, there's a scene, um, Megan, my fiance, we, we were sitting on the couch and I was showing her all of your art for Absolute Carnage, that like PDF that we got. Yeah. And there's that scene in the diner when Spider-Man does that thing to those guys. Yeah. And she was like, Jesus, that's aggressive. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, I know. That's that's some crazy. I was like, this dude's been drawing Venom for too long. Spider-Man's yeah. straight going ham on some fools. Um, I so think he again, knows how to just not injure people. <laughs> yeah, it was, a, it was like a WWE kick. He's just real mm-hmm. trained at that. Um, so again, uh, lightning. Um, I, I really liked this scene because I feel like uh, – I, I always enjoy it in like Batman comics when we get to see Batman from how regular people on the street see him, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. Um, and this was actually this panel. Um, I don't know if this is why Ryan did this, but this is why I, in the script I, I had him being uh, backlit and you can't see anything of him. That actually came from a conversation with um, uh, 
our our stepson's actual father, uh, Todd McFarlane. Um, who Todd and I will occasionally we'll talk on the phone like three times a year, and he's the greatest guy, the guy in the world. Um, uh, uh, and 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 when Todd was talking to me about um, about the art, and he was asking me who was doing it. I said Ryan was doing it, and he was like, "Oh, that's great! Like he loves Ryan to death." Um, he was asking us about the inking, and he said that um, that like the best thing that you can do for Venom is to just make him this like black void. Like the mm-hmm. light should just look like it disappears into him. Like don't rim light him, don't shade him. Like disappear into the void. Mm-hmm. And I was like, that's fucking dope. And so like <laughs> I tried to get that across in my script, and then Ryan came in and fucking nailed it. Hey, Todd McFarlane understands Venom. Um, yeah, I mean, guy gives you a piece of advice, you should probably take it. Um, just real quick, I mean, uh, Ryan, you've probably thought about it already, but like. How many times people ask you, Ryan, who's your inspiration? And how many times do you say Todd McFarlane? And here we are. Todd McFarlane's like, yeah, Ryan Segman's pretty fucking good. How does that make you feel? <laughs> oh, it's fucking crazy. I mean, I've <laughs> met him a few times now. Like, I've sat, I sat at a, next to him at a signing. I've, mm-hmm. uh, you know, gone up and talked to him. And it's totally surreal because of everything that he's meant to me. Oh, yeah. You know, there's a few guys like that. Like, Greg Capullo was like that for me, too. I was just like, oh, my God. <laughs> I'm shaking his hand right now. And now I see Greg all the time and he's just like, Oh hey man, what you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's so weird. Yeah, um, I called I I called Todd um when I was um kind of formally cast on Venom and um uh called him and told him that I got that job and that I was gonna be kinda taking it over and I asked for his um blessing, you mm-hmm. know, to go and, and do it and he he gave it to me obviously and was very sweet and he said he was you know he was very happy and then i he was like so what are you going to be doing and i told him like the kind of the whole plan that i told uh i told ryan and he was just like he was just like i uh he was like it was uh it's kind of just a monster for us that sounds crazy and i was like yeah it's crazy and he was like i hope that works out and i was like yeah me too man i don't know you know he was like those are crazy ass ideas man um honestly i feel so like really that cool. is a lot of um people uh, at least just from from my perspective the sort of ground floor view here i feel like that is what so many people start off with just their notion of venom is he is he's beast spider-man like you know big old monster spider-man and that's a that's about as much as most i think the the general public understand about him um and it's funny to to bring up even legend todd mcfarland is like yeah he's just he was a monster for us and i i really think that um that just goes to show the the level of depth and uh, the creativity you guys are bringing to this character that people think they've had figured out for however many years, 30 years now. Well, it's not just us, though. You know, I mean, I mean, so many it, so many hands have have touched this character mm-hmm. um, since the jump, like since Todd and David. I mean, uh, Lethal Protector redefined him for an era. Mm-hmm. You flash forward. There's I mean, then Rick came in and redefined him for an era. Mm-hmm. You know, there's all these uh, people who always come in and have these amazing takes on the character and he's um i always kind of liken venom to uh ghost rider that like ghost rider and venom uh kind of share this like um the same space that when he first when they uh, both characters came out they were kind of just like a rad drawing and a cool like metal sounding name that no mm-hmm. one could have ever imagined would be what they are today mm-hmm. you know and then just like I think a generation of kids who fell in love with that character and the way they looked and the way they sounded and the way the way they were written grew up into positions where then they could take it over. And so for like Ghost Rider, you have someone like Jason Aaron who so very clearly grew up being in love with that character. And then Jason Aaron g- gets onto it. And like Jason Aaron's Ghost Rider run was a big influence on this run because Jason came in and at a at a a time in that character's life where there was still so much fertile ground for the mythology behind mm-hmm. that character. And he came in and he just blew it out and just like was able to build this whole backstory. Uh, Jeff John's um, um, Lantern Rebirth is the same Absolutely. way. Mm-hmm. Uh, Jeff John's came in and he used um, he used every part of the animal, right? Yeah. That, that was a huge inspiration for us. Because um, I, I don't, people, people accuse us of retconning all the time. I don't think that we have that much. I, I'll cop to it a few times. Um, but really what we, what we were, what we're doing is finding, um, little 
pieces of Venom's backstory and the symbiote's backstory that just there's not been any light shined on or yet, right? Um, and we try and use every part of the animal in so much as making sure that we state that everything that you've read happened, mm -hmm. but then just trying to um, um, uh, take all those stories and place them in a specific order in a specific um, uh, placing them like dominoes that where we can flick them down they all lead back to us does that make sense absolutely um, and 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 I think it's be it is because Ryan and I are such diehard Venom fans that like you know, people have asked us like how much research did you guys have to do for the stories and I was like well I mean a lot and none because I've been researching this gig since I was four mm -hmm. you know so when I started writing it not much, right? Um, I don't even know what the fuck we're talking about anymore. Anyway. <laughs> you know what we're oh, talking the about? the eye gouge. Yeah, the eye on. gouge, really mm -hmm. quick. The eye gouge. Um, in the script, it is fucking the, the, the Red Viper Adorn treatment, dude. Mm -hmm. It's, mm -hmm. it's two thumbs in the eyes, like, killing that fool. <laughs> and we got a thing back from Standards and Practices at Marvel saying, uh, absolutely not. You can't... You can't gouge this guy's out in the streets. Um, no one was being a dick. It's just a standards and practices thing, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, very proud of myself. I wrote them back and I said, what about one eye? And they were like, that's fine. <laughs> oh, okay. Sure. <laughs> and I was like, okay, all right. But I'm so glad I didn't ju just say like, oh, okay, I'll break his leg or something. I'm really glad because weirdly, one eye, scarier. <laughs> it's weird that like because now he's looking into Venom's face as his other eye is being gouged out uh -huh, and that's uh -huh. kind of more fucked up and way more metal <laughs> so I like it I like how it turned out and also Ryan absolutely drew it like it's here's both the thing eyes. Yeah, it's, it's both, both eyes it's both. in the second panel you see both eyes but then if you look at the splash page he's covering one eye very clearly like See Disney, one yeah. eye, we're good. <laughs> <laughs> I even believe this. Well, you it even says my eyes. Uh, my plural. eyes. <laughs> I know. It might have been a late edit that we had to like write around. I don't know. I'll say one thing about this page. I love how Frank colored the water underneath them red as it goes oh, and yeah. away from his head. That's so brilliant. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. Uh, the next Everyone, page, I know we have a lot of questions. The splash, about, so. yes. There's yeah. so yeah. many questions about this uh, this incredible splash page revealing this this ancient venom look, the spiral on the face, the sure. red uh, the red veins, and the red spider emblem. Um, where does this design come from? That's what everybody has asked: is what where did you get this look for ancient possessed uh, venom? This was more or less in the script. Um, mm -hmm. um, Man, I wish I had my script in front of me. I could just I could just read it to you. Um, I'll kind of add up all the pieces. Um, the there's a there's a few parts of this where Ryan deviated in brilliant ways. Um, so the little like it's like kind of pockmarked all over him. Mm -hmm. um, uh, do you guys know what, uh, what what is it called, Ryan? The triophobia or tripophobia or something like that. Triophobia or something, or something like that. Do you know what I'm talking about? You're nodding your head. Ethan, it's just <laughs> you can you can if you Google image search it, which please no. be careful if you do this because there's some it's fucking gnarly. Um, it's this, <laughs> it, it's like these like concentric circles that like form in like people's skins. And if you see it, it can trigger a reaction in a lot of people that makes their skin crawl. Um, it's like it's trichinosis or or, or trip the trichophobia. I don't or, know. So it's yeah. Holy shit! Holy Do you see it? Shit. <laughs> yep. So yep. it makes your skin crawl, right? Absolutely. And no yep. one really knows why. The 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 prevailing theory, and if anyone knows online, please tell me. Prevailing theory is that there used to maybe be some poisonous plants that looked like that that we've since evolved out of, but it still triggers that emotion in us. It still triggers that 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 like creepy feeling mm -hmm. and so i wanted the symbiote to look like that over his entire body so that we could trigger people into feeling uncomfortable uh, when they were looking at this um the spiral is straight out of some like lovecraftian cthulhu shit um mm -hmm. which crazy is that Junji true detective huh junji ito yeah that thing what he said <laughs> um 
uh, it, 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 True Detective was on at the same time as I was writing this, and I was like going down this rabbit hole of like finding all these like occult symbols and stuff. And that fucking spiral was all over that first season of True Detective, and I was like, well, okay, cool, yeah, right on, man. Um, the thing on his chest is not a spider; it's a dragon, which is foreshadowing for the end of this thing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, the symbiotes took the forms of dragons first and foremost. Again, trying to distance ourselves away from that spider theme, from that from the, from the Spider-Man stuff. Um, I don't know what the Ryan speak to like the kind of red tubular kind of uh, veins and stuff on him. That was not in the script. Yeah, because that wasn't in the script. I don't know why I did that. I think it looks just fucking it looks creepy. Awesome. Because it looks yeah. dope. What? I had no idea they were going to be red. And Frank did that, and he mm-hmm. sent this page in, and we were just like, uh, yeah, yep. that's exactly yep, that's what we it. had in mind. <laughs> yeah, yeah, totally. No, I mean, it looks great. I mean, it looks, because that's the thing, is like without those tubes and like the, without that red that kind of emanates out of that dragon, um, it wouldn't look as infected. Yeah, right? there's something primordial it, about it. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Very yeah, it looks, alive about those veins. It mm-hmm. looks old, and I think the most important part of it with is you take those eyes away, you put that spiral on there, you lose, uh, by inches and by miles, you start to lose the human in mm-hmm, there. Mm-hmm, you mm-hmm. know, that's not a dude anymore. You know, that's a full-on fucking animal. Um, and what he's saying there is God is coming. That's, that's, the, that's what that translates to. As well, I should tattoo that on me. That'd be fucking rad. The spiral or the text? Yes. Fuck yeah, go for it. Man. <laughs> do the spiral get, on your face. Get the whole dragon on your yeah. chest. What do you mean? I have a venom tattoo on my arm up up, up here, but um, if you order a certain a number of Absolute Carnage number one, they're gonna send you. This is real. They're gonna send you a booklet of temporary tattoos. And one of them is the null symbol, which is the dragon. Mm-hmm. One of them is the spiral. And one of them is my actual tattoo from my arm. I had to, like, take pictures of my body to send to Marvel for them to, like, like Wild. make a tattoo. It's, yeah, it's weird. I did not know this. I don't know um, why my tattoos. I'm not the only comic book creator who has a sleeve. Like, Jason Aaron has, a f- like, two full sleeves. And he, he doesn't <laughs> get the tattoo thing doesn't. Anyway. He's got a Viking thing going on. I guess he's not. His brand isn't not as metal, not yeah. as edge. Um, I don't know, dude. The writer of Thor is pretty fucking metal, dude. I don't know if I'd, <laughs> I don't know if I'd go around saying Jason Aaron's not metal. Listen, um, I will fight Jason Aaron any day. Let it be known. And uh, not every only one of those days, <laughs> <laughs> if only to be like Jason. Man, you're fucking killing it, dude. And then I let him punch me in the face, and it would be a yeah. blessing on my part. Um, I, I'm trying to. I'm trying to figure out. What the fuck this says in this next page in... You know what? If you guys will just give me a second, I'll pull up my script. Just pull up that script real quick. Want to make a note on the splash page. Um, Jack-o'-lantern is only covering one eye. So the official canon is one <laughs> eye. It wasn't both. You guys are in the clear. Do not worry about it. That's right, Marvel <laughs> censors. We're good boys. Don't get mad at us. Um, we do have a question about the uh, the following page. We had somebody. Um, 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 let me find it here. Um, I'm losing it now. Uh, but somebody asked. My apologies, I don't have your name in front of me. But somebody asked what specifically is being said uh, in panel two of the next page. Well, that's what I'm looking for my. Uh, uh, I'm trying to find my script. I don't keep. I mean, he's saying the, God is coming. In he's saying God is coming in the first one. I don't. I, I'm trying to look at. I think that first word is null. Um, oh, no, it's God is coming. He's coming hard. Yeah, mm. he's coming super hard. He says, he says <laughs> God is coming, and so am I. Uh-huh. <laughs> this is. The world. I turned Everybody's this script in on December 31st, 2017. Sweet. At five sixteen p.m., would well, have been cooler if it was six sixteen. Um, okay, Venom Rex Part One. Uh, what fucking page is this? I, don't, I wouldn't even know. Um, it's fourteen in the in the issue. Um, okay, that includes all right, all right, the cover. So it would be. Okay, let's see here. You guys want to read? You guys want to hear the description for the the. 
uh, page eleven, the um, the splash with the thing on the the infected thing. Absolutely. Okay. Um, splash. Venom turns around to reveal that well, something is very very wrong. The suit seems broken, like it can't figure out how to make the tra- the traditional Venom look. The spider symbol on the suit looks more like some sort of um, dragon, with the design of the legs now making up the bony wings of the creature and the abdomen snaking down into a twisting tail it should look messy though like more of a cave painting than a stylish spider design we know and love as for the face the teeth are all over the place not able to stay in their place uh, not not able to stay in the place they're supposed to be and they are in rows like a shark um, instead of the Spider-Man eyes, he normally has Venom as a bizarre spiral-like design in the middle of its face. Again, very tribal and ancient. This should be menacing and horrific. The suit also has small holes all over it in rough patches. I want to make the audience skin crawl when they see him. Um, tryptophobia, blah, 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 blah. To me, it also has taken on a blood-red color here. Something is seriously fucking wrong. Hmm. <laughs> We said red. Frank didn't do it. Still I guess, awesome. I guess so. Okay, so on that second panel, he says, God is coming. And he says, Null. Null is awake. All right. Well, there's that question answered for you, faithful fan. Um, yeah. Whatever your name was. I apologize. I deleted your name. Um, <laughs> that's me being a shitty host. Um, well, awesome. Thanks for pulling that up. Do you guys have sure. any more to talk about before we get introduced to Rex? No. All right. Well, then. Or do you, Ryan? I'm sorry. I didn't mean to talk for you. No, that's introduced good. for Rex. Okay. Um, so we do have a couple of uh, questions here uh, about Rex. Venom, the same Venom maniac uh, from earlier asks, what do you guys imagine Rex Strickland sounds like? Uh, for me, I picture Halo's very own Sergeant Avery Johnson. Danny no. Glover. It's Danny Glover. I mean, he's he's designed <laughs> to look like Danny Glover. He is Danny Glover. In fact, Absolutely. his original name uh, in the script was Rex Harrigan, and uh, his name was Rex Harrigan because because um, Lieutenant Mike Harrigan is Danny Glover's name from Predator Two, mm-hmm. which to me is the best Venom film ever made. Uh, <laughs> That's a good point. Predator good point. Predator Two is Venom. It's Danny Glover chasing Venom around the city. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's actually a movie that I watched for inspiration <laughs> instead of to write Venom. Um, you heard it first, folks. Predator 2 equals Donny Cates' Venom run. There's no... It's yeah, been you, pretty much, man. And so he looks like him. He sounds like him. Talks like him. Um, that's who he is. Sweet. Started. Hey, I'm looking yeah. at this book right now, and uh, I gotta say, this art's pretty fucking good. It's pretty who fucking good, this? dude. Who drew this? I mean, uh, J.P. Mayer and... Frank Martin are knocking it out of the goddamn park. <laughs> let me say. Yeah. I honestly do. I haven't looked at this since it came out. Like I don't. I don't. I because you know you and I spend so much time on this shit that it, I get. I get the comps and I never really look at them again. Yeah, I know. Um, but yeah, it's a it's a it's a, it's a good looking thing. And God, look at that incinerator. We really. We really foreshadowed the fuck out of that incinerator for oh, yeah. issues and issues and issues <laughs> on end. Do mm-hmm. not forget, there is an incinerator. This and you know innocuous what? warehouse that has a working giant incinerator. Um, <laughs> I don't know why it has that. It seems like it was a good idea. It seems or why like it has amps. Why, it, why he has amps in it. Well, it's, you know, he's obviously... What's cool about this, I, I, I always thought, you know what? When this issue came out, people said, and I completely get like why they would think this. People said that, that this was so obviously an issue written... Uh, about Flash Thompson, mm-hmm. and then like we f- we found out we couldn't use Flash Thompson or something, and so we subbed in Eddie. And I completely get that. Like if you read this with that in mind, you could get that because this whole plot with like Rex and like um, the well the plot you think you're reading, which is mm-hmm. like oh ancient soldiers with symbiote tech and uh, Shield has been disbanded, and you got to go get these ex soldiers out. And everything that's that's a great flash thompson story right Absolutely. um but you know when you start to zig where everyone thinks you're gonna zag which is that it's not about fucking any of that and it's about the god of symbiotes i think you kind of lose the the um the flash thompson of it all um not that eddie's any more equipped for it 
Um, absolutely. I want to say in uh, this uh, this panel over here, uh, it's panel two on page 16, um, is this, I'm trying to set, tell is if it's the symbiote coming out of Eddie's eyes or the symbiote prying Eddie's eyes. Prying. Open. Okay. Prying them open. Yeah, waking them um, up. Yeah. That's pretty fucking metal, if I do say so myself. And We uh, do occasionally have the symbiote come out of his eyes, though, because um, it's just fucking cool looking. Mm-hmm. Uh, especially when Ryan Stegman draws it, let me say. Um, so, Rex. Rex is here. What do you have to say about the character Rex? Um, Besides the fact that he's Danny Glover. It's, I mean, what else needs to be said? He's fucking Danny Glover, dude. He's <laughs> a national treasure. So, um, was the was the twist with him planned from the, from the oh, beginning? Oh, yeah. Let me just say, like, people ask us that all the time. Like, was this planned from the beginning? Was this planned from the beginning? Ryan... Everything was planned from the beginning, right? Like that f- first that first phone call with you was was went into who Rex, what Rex really is. It went through the v- Vanam issue. It went through every twist in the abyss. It went through every twist in Absolute Carnage. It went through Null's yeah. origin. I mean, yeah, you had it all. It was all there. It was crazy. Yeah. It was all like of this a, shit is. It was like is, a beautiful mind. It's it's planned out, and then like. The arc that's after Absolute Carnage, the arc that's after that, and the big thing that's after that, and the thing that's after that. Like, I I very uh, famously went to my, like, I think my first Marvel retreat and got kind of endlessly clowned on because I literally... How the Marvel retreats work is there's, like, roughly 12 or 13 of us that are, like, exclusive writers. And we go and we sit in this, like, kind of round table with all the editorial staff and then all the... Um, um, uh, like TV guys and the movie guys and the theme park guys and the merch guys and the video game guys and just like everyone, right? Mm-hmm. And then uh, we just go person by person giving like book reports. So Jason will tell us, you know, what's cracking on Thor and Dan will go through, you know, Fantastic Four and Iron Man and then I'll do, you know, whatever the fuck I'm doing. Um, and when I had to go my first retreat that I walked through Venom, I walked through five years of Venom arc by arc damn near issue by issue and it was only my second retreat and like cb was like dude are you are you when is when does this arc come out and i'm like this would be 2021 and he was like you don't have to go that you don't have to do it that far he was like just tell us like what's happened like this year and i was like well i didn't know and like i literally i think i talked for like 40 minutes and that is not what you're supposed to do Mm -hmm. but Every retreat since then, I've it's never changed. It's it's just that's the plan, and it's I knew what my entire run on the book was going to be um, a few months into getting the, the assignment, like how it was going to begin, how it was going to end. As a result, it it's kind of backfired us in a in a, a few ways that are temporary backfires. Um, it is hard sometimes for fans to see the. Um, the 50,000 foot view up Mm -hmm. to see the grand story that's being told. Um, And so they will sometimes think that we're losing our way or that we're like, we're like um, losing the plot. But like, I, 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 I firmly believe that when this is all collected and when we do get to our end point and we stick our landing, you'll be able to go back and see that we were always telling one big story and Mm -hmm. that every piece of it is important and all of the things that you might think are like weird or fucked up or like the Dylan stuff seems to be out of nowhere or what the other like criticisms that I don't agree with that people have levied at us. It's just that they can't see, they don't know the shit that Ryan and I know that like Mm Devin knows that JP knows that Frank knows that Marvel as a whole knows. And Mm -hmm. so like people who are emailing Marvel and telling them to fire us, you're, you're wasting your time. It's not ever going to happen. Um, uh, and if you don't like it, you can just wait for the next crew. Um, but we're, we're, we're locked in. The story's not changing. It never will. I'm ready for it. Welcome to the podcast. Ryan, are you, (laughs) yeah, come on. They got a podcast. (laughs) They're not going fucking anywhere. Ryan, are you ready to draw all that shit? How excited are you, man? Yeah. I mean, the, the exciting thing for me is knowing what I'm going to be doing for however long, like, Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, I kind of jumped around quite a bit prior to this. Um, and, you know, some projects I liked more than others. And this one, I just know that I love the project and I'm just going to be doing 
this stuff that I love for, you know, the foreseeable future. So I don't have to worry about anything. I'm just, you know, I'm just locked. I'm, I'm dialed in for sure. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Well, it's cool too, though, right, Ryan? Is that like as we get to talk, like, you know, so much so much of the time in comics, especially coming up in comics, you're, it's always so uncertain of like mm-hmm. what the next thing is going to be. And it's just right. so gratifying and cool that like as we're getting into absolute carnage now and as we know what the arc after that is and like the, the kind of the grand plan that we have, we're we're getting to all of it and we're doing right. it all. And so like yeah. the plans, it's, it's so fucking rad to like talk about things and then years later like we're like, oh shit, we're doing that thing now. That's, that's, that's cool. And also, and I mean, if this book could have not done well and right. they could have been like, you know, but it, it seems to be doing so well that we're going to get to do everything that we wanted to do. Which yeah, is, that's the thing. Is that like it know, could have? Unbelievable. Uh, someone in the room, uh, I think it was one of my best friends, Matthew Rosen, whatever. Um, uh, uh, he was just like, "That's a really big plan for a book that you have no idea if it's going to work or not." And I was like, "Yeah, but fucking plan big and then wrap it up if it gets canceled." But like, I'm never going to go in expecting myself to fail. You right. know, I'm always going to go in expecting because, like, I if I don't believe in the story, how can I expect anyone else to ever believe in it? You know, right. so like you always you always go in with expectations that you're going to that the book's going to be dope. Otherwise, why? Why do it? Right. Mm-hmm. Um, but anyway, we're 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 doing a, a director's commentary. Um, <laughs> so um, we always just get distracted talking about how dope we are. Um I always quite like this sequence of two men uh, playing their own game against each other while the symbiote plays its own game around them, right? Mm-hmm. Like the symbiote sneaking up on him and this reveal that he knew that Rex knew it was there the entire time mm-hmm. and uh, you can't sneak up on this shit. You want to ask, was this shit planned from the beginning? Well, how else did, did Rex know it was there if he wasn't a symbiote himself? Right. Yeah. Spoiler, spoiler alert. Um, and by the way, people have asked me this, this panel on whatever page this is where he, you know, Rex is asking him all these questions about the symbiote and kind of dressing Eddie down about like, how have you never asked these questions? Like, how have you never delved this deep into this thing that's attached to you? And this scene, this last panel where he says, what's its name? People have asked me, have I forgotten about this panel? No. No, that's that long game shit, guys. Um, questions that are asked in the first issue that are answered in, in the last. So hang in there on that. Um, and then these other questions, too. This was kind of a larger theme for me, which is a, a, something to me that makes Eddie. This is what makes Eddie Eddie or what makes Eddie Venom to me is that like every single time a different character has gotten the symbiote or a symbiote they've always gone through this process of being fucking terrified of it or at least being um, uh, curious about how it works or or blown away by it or shocked or having some sort of a visceral reaction to having fucking in this like alien like invade your consciousness and all these things, right? And bond to you. Um, Eddie got it a long time ago and was just like, dope, let's roll. And like to me, what kind of a man is that? Like, mm-hmm. that's what's interesting about Eddie is that Eddie was not afraid of it at all. Eddie got it and was just like, fuck, yeah, I'm Venom now. Let's roll. Mm-hmm. Right. And that's what Rex is talking about here. People thought that when this came out that I was dressing down either the readers or I was trying to be like holier than thou from the readers or like to like past runs. I was like trying to shit on past runs something like that. That's not at all what's happening here. This is. Literally, Rex asking Eddie, like, what kind of a man are you that you don't know that? Like, why why are you, mm-hmm. right? Um, and that's a theme that will go on into the beginning of the next issue, which begins with who is Eddie Brock, right? And that's kind of Rex's path here is Rex was our kind of a conduit to try and get to the bottom of some of those um, kind of deeper answers about what kind of a man Eddie is. Awesome. And, um Ryan, unless you have anything you want to talk about from this scene with Rex, I think we can jump ahead to um, Eddie's confrontation with a fleet of trucks. Yeah, well, let's that, go ahead to that. Cause Ryan, that, that, that picture about that. of the soldiers was a stat, right? Well, yeah, but they, they asked me to do like a, a really uh, nice version of it so that we could use it for the cover for um, Vena, Venom number one. So Venom. Basically, Venom. Venom. Uh, um 
there was I was I did a uh, drawing in there and it was just kind of it wasn't super detailed and then they were like wow we should spend more time on that how about if we do this um you know and then we use it as the cover to Van Am so then I so I drew it much larger than this panel here and then we shrunk it down and put it in there so yeah. that's why it, yeah sweet I don't know if we got into it. Is it in Vinam or is it in this? I think there was a line that was originally in this where Rex um, said what his code name was, um, what his like his Venom name was, and his him and his symbiote uh, they were called Tyrannosaurus Rex, which yeah, I is think that was a, a fucking that was metal in name Venom, for a symbiote. I don't think that we had that. Yeah, I don't think we had it in here. Um, oh, little trivia. Uh, 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 Rex's new last name, Strickland, comes from Strickland Propane from King of the Hill, um, which is uh, based on the town that I grew up in. Uh, All right. I came from a little I, – I, I come from a little town in Texas called Garland. King of the Hill takes place in Arlen, um, and it's just fucking like that. So it's a little tip of my hat to my Texas heritage. Sweet. So should we get into these trucks? Get into the trucks. Eddie's facing down. Yeah, Ryan, uh, this was this was not how this scene was in the script. You want to tell yeah. him how you, how you just bitched out on this and, and didn't <laughs> didn't draw it the, the the way that it was supposed to. Well, Donnie wanted the symbiote <laughs> to be invisible, to to be in invisible mode and like wrap up Eddie, and so you see Eddie there, um, you know against the truck mm -hmm. but then there's like a, a clearly a shield around him and so basically smashing into it yeah so it would be like eddie's just standing there and then when the truck hits him the truck would wrap around the invisible form of venom symbiote around him mm -hmm. and then it would uncloak to show that venom was there and ryan called me and he was like i ain't got time for this shit <laughs> <laughs> it was like I don't, well, I don't i don't have time for this shit <laughs> i showed him a layout that sucked and we were like, I don't know, like, there's got to be something better. And then essentially we just, uh, we, we got to the point where we were like, well, maybe he should just be in his costume. And then, right. you know, we just changed it so that he starts, um, his eyes turn black on the previous page and the symbiote starts coming out. And then, uh, you know, then the next page is the best Venom spread uh, of all time until <laughs> until Carnage August comes out. Yeah, until <laughs> August. There, there's a spread in we we're such cocky dicks that Absolute Carnage the number one features an homage to Venom number one. <laughs> we we homage our own spread, but like a, a million times bigger and and more metal. Um, yeah. Uh, but yeah, I mean that's one of those things. Honestly, Ryan was his instinct was right because that's a scene that would work really well in a movie, like a live right. action scene. That invisibility thing would work. Sometimes shit works better in different mediums, and sometimes the writer's eye isn't as strong as the artist eye. And you know, well, I think we both saw it. We saw the layout, and we were just like something about this. Yeah, it didn't click the way that it. it it's a. It's kind of a motion based. Uh, pivot right mm -hmm. and we, you don't you just don't have that in this. and we need it you know this is venom number one you know you yeah need this uh shot you know yeah. you need this big moment so um this is uh i will cop to this um i wrote a book at dark horse uh with my friend Dan, Dan, daniel warren johnson that was about um it's called the ghost fleet it was about a uh, a fleet of black ops truckers and that series got canceled. It was supposed to be 12 issues. It only lasted eight. But in the issues that never got published, there was this idea of secret highways that mm -hmm. ran underneath the country. Like they would haul stuff, and there was just going to be this big action sequence in one of these underground highways with the fleet of trucks. And I just completely scrapped it and put it in Venom. So this is a little bit of my Marvel work crushing my dark horse work about how i got pissed <laughs> off about it and so venom like crushing this um this canceled series that has always been a sore spot with me and daniel you know it's funny also you mentioned daniel i showed him this layout and uh he was the one who was like have his feet digging into the yeah uh concrete, oh, that makes so much so. sense that's such a daniel thing yeah so i added that rising um, concrete thanks to him yeah yeah, that's uh, it's it's fucking awesome. Like, 
if if somebody said, hey, you know that scene in the Avengers where Hulk, uh, Bruce Banner hulks out and then punches the alien ship right in the face? Yeah. If somebody said, what if they did that, but it was Venom and it was uh, like somehow even cooler? This is fucking it right here. <laughs> uh, the comics translation of the um, the badassery that that scene holds, I think, in the first Avengers film is right here. It's dope. Um, but what happens next? Um, well, Nothing. hold on. I wanted to see if I had the, end of the, the script for this double page splash because I can't imagine that it says much. Um, but I, I, again, whatever it is, because like, if I was writing this for Ryan now, I'd be like, "Oh, dude, this is so crazy." I'm looking at the script page for these two pages, and it's like a paragraph long. Um, nowadays, I would write this as Venom stops a big ass fucking truck, make it look right. dope. You know? Yeah, exactly. Um, but then now it's it's like fucking two paragraphs. Why I fucking overwrote the shit out of this thing? Um, but yeah, what's ha- what happens next? This is where shit gets real. Because like, honestly, the entire book is just kind of a bunch of zigs and zags and feints to get us here. And as you can see, as we were talking about Frank and Frank's storytelling, look at how when that double page spread happens, how the entire palette of the book changes. And it turns into a horror book. You see mm-hmm. that? How things mm-hmm. start getting really hot and things start getting really weird. And as you start turning pages, you see that. You see how it just keeps on getting weirder and more out there. And like they stop being, um, it's called local colors. Like local colors mean that like you would color if, if um, you know, if my shirt's black, you would color it black, right? But then you start to go to these like more expressive stuff where none of these colors are actually what they would actually be, but they're, they're, they're storytelling. Does that make sense? Absolutely. And so Frank just starts going buck wild because the book starts turning into what it really is, which is a horror mm-hmm. book. Um, so yeah, what happens is, um, uh, you know, fucking Venom opens up a truck and hell is inside of it. These men have already been corrupted. Um, mm-hmm. They're, they're already dead. Um, they're already kind of uh, infected by, by null um there's something else inside there uh inside that truck that was being transported that was uh opened up uh got one of my favorite two panel sequences when um the symbiote bows down and then there's that kind of like that gunslinger shot of the tentacles forming into that blade mm-hmm. 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 it's so fucking dope and creepy um <laughs> and then eddie turns into saber tooth for a panel <laughs> And then, uh, <laughs> um, and this caption here is, uh, I, I realized, I realized too late that I'm screaming into a void, um, which is literally true. If you go back and read it after, you know, who Null is He's literally screaming into the Lord of the void. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, uh, Eddie gets fucking dealt with He gets stabbed through his chest to the greatest sound effect of all time. Splutch. Mm-hmm. Um, exact, I, I've sta- I had to stab somebody in the chest so that I could s- hear what it sounded like. Splutch. <laughs> yeah, that, well, that's it just research. Splutch. You can write that off on your taxes. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then, so yeah, these men, uh, they go back into the truck. Uh, they open something. Um, and when they come back out, they're fucking dead. Um, and their symbiotes have been ripped clean off of them. And those symbiotes combine with whatever was being held captive in that. And we turn the page to reveal what that thing was. And it was the motherfucking Grendel as a fucking dragon. Um, and that was supposed to be a page turn, but it's It not wasn't. It's was one of turn. the most fucking infuriating things. Um, <laughs> it was, you know, you, you, it was a 30 page issue, which are always tricky because you have mm-hmm. to put ads in them and shit. Um, mm-hmm. And in the trade, it's a page turn, which is great. Yeah, um, they, they fixed it. They fixed it in the trade. Well, because I wrote it as a page turn. Like, a page 30 should always Mm -hmm. be a page turn, right? Mm -hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. And I had to sacrifice a few other page turns. Like, the original, the the splash page of of, of Venom being infected, um, the first time we ever see it, that's not a page turn in the book because I had to write it that way to get that page 30 page turn. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yep. Just like the, 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 uh, pagination of the book. Right. And then due to ads and all kinds of things like that, uh, and no one's fault. It's, it's, this shit happens all the time. And again, 30 pages are tough. That 
that God is coming big, big splash page ended up being on the uh, right side of the page, just like there in plain sight, which is a bummer. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. I mean, it still works. It's, People still yeah, liked it's still it. Cool as hell. And I actually, that's the only original page of Venom that I own. And I don't even own the pendles. I only own the inks. I own this page, the first appearance of the, of the dragon. Hear that, Ryan? Your pencils weren't good enough. You needed the inks, too. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, that's a whole story. <laughs> that's a, yeah, bullshit. Here's the thing. It is, um, it is considered somewhat customary um, for the writer of a book to, somewhere along the line, uh, mm-hmm. receive a gift from the artist of a original page. It is considered somewhat of a custom. Now, what <laughs> happened, and I, <laughs> Ryan's rolling his eyes at me for those who are just uh, listening. Um, what happened was because this is the uh, best book in the whole world, every mm-hmm. fucking issue of this book art sold complete, which means that a buyer came and bought every page of it before it ever came out. So Ryan couldn't mm-hmm. give me a page because I want Ryan to go make that money, son. Um, <laughs> uh, what happened was a collector came by my table and had me sign original art from it. And I was looking at it, and I just told this guy, I was like, man, I got to tell you, man, uh, it makes me really upset that you own these. Like, It makes me really <laughs> upset that you have these, and I don't have a single page of this ever. Um, and Ryan, you and I have never told this story. Right. Um, so I made him a deal. He was like, he was like if, you will, if you will draw me, he said this to me. He was like, if you will draw me into the book, um, I'll give you the inks from this page. And I was like, done. And what I did not do was ask Ryan if that was okay. Because um, I just called Ryan later and sent him a bunch of pictures of a random dude at a con. And we're just like, hey, you got to draw this guy in. Because <laughs> that's the only way I'm ever going to get a page. And so that guy is the cop uh, in the free comp book day issue. Yep. Uh, oh, like wow. The second page or whatever. That's that and guy. And now he, he owns all of the free comic yeah, book day art. He and bought he the whole thing. bought it all, and that's why I don't have any of that shit either. Yeah. Ryan Come keeps on. on Ryan sends me dope pencils all the time. Today he sent me a cover to Absolute Carnage number four, and this is my life now. I was like on the phone earlier t- today. I was like, "Dude, that page is so dope. Can I have that?" And he goes, <laughs> "Yeah, no." <laughs> it's just like it's just it's a joke now that I'll never get to own a single You'll page of it. I never. No, I do actually own. Uh, the first drawing of the of the um, of uh, the way that Carnage the Carnage's new design from Absolute Carnage. I own the first mm-hmm. drawing that you. Ever yeah, did I that. did it at the the retreat that we did. Yeah, because you were sitting next to me and I took it off of your lap. You just said, "This <laughs> is I'll, mine." Now. I'll have this <laughs> one. God damn it! I'm sorry. I'm su- I'm such a fan of you. Pardon me. I'm sorry. I love too hard, Ryan. You know, I resent all fans. <laughs> all I of want them. that out there. <laughs> um, so that's Venom number one. I, I know I kind of, I kind of, uh, I was just kind of doing like the, the the quick action beats. Ryan, did you want to talk about any kind of specific um, like art scenes uh, or, or, or or shit that you like in here? No, I'm just, I'm really proud of it. I, I going back through it, that was really fun for me because I mean I haven't looked at this in a while. And you know, I just completed a sixty-page issue that nearly broke me. Yeah. And uh, just seeing this, I feel like uh, this is all worth it. All this work is worth it. It's this is a great book. Uh, every you know, Frank and JP are doing unbelievable work. Yeah. I'm just uh, this kind of like got me more stoked. So this is really yeah, cool. I kind of right. Yeah, it's totally. I mean, we 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 never do this. Like we always mm-hmm. we're always looking forward. You know, we well, never we're always yeah, we're always hard on ourselves. So this is yeah, pretty neat. Yeah, because here's the thing that people don't I seem to get about Ryan and I is that we we always call all of our, all of our shit dope and we always like pat each other on the back so much because we are um, uh, joking uh, mm-hmm. because we are so concerned about uh, the craft yeah, of the book and we do actually we insecure. want it we do want it to be perfect and we work our ass off because we know how much this character means to everybody and how much it means to us um, right. and the majority of us being you know quote unquote cocky and all that stuff is we want we're venom we're venom heads and venom maniacs just like everybody else is and we want everyone to feel like we're really into it just as much as they are but we do labor over this stuff and we do we're very critical of ourselves well, and, um, I, I would have the worst twitter feed on the planet if i went on there and <laughs> said what i was actually thinking like, right guys i'm really scared i don't know if you're gonna <laughs> like this because well, that's the thing though ryan right is that what they don't what 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 fans don't hear are like the long phone calls of 
you know, uh, you calling me a- anguishing over a page or me calling right. you and being like, the scene's not fucking working and I don't know how to make it right. work and this sucks. And, you know, and, 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 you know, that is a testament to how this creative team works and stuff is that Ryan and I always have each other's backs. Even when I have to tell Ryan that like, nah, son, that's trash. You got to redo that. Or Ryan has to call me and say like, that scene's not garbage. You're, you're writing garbage. Don't do, don't, don't do that. You know? Um, so yeah, we take it seriously. We're just, we're just real cocky about it. <laughs> hey, you heard it here first folks on Ryan Stegman and uh, Johnny Cates. Everybody uses humor as a defense mechanism, even <laughs> your favorite comic creators. Yeah. Um, um, well, Hey, that was a, fucking awesome director's commentary right there i think people are going to love that